The first election um, after the 19th Amendment, it's, it's ratified in 1920. Well, who's the vice presidential candidate on the Democratic side? It's Franklin Roosevelt. So early on, you know, he's beginning to try to test the waters. How does this new phenomenon, women voting, how is that going to play out? So I don't think it's a total surprise that, that Eleanor is such a precedent shattering sort of figure, or at least perceived that way. That's, she's really the first post woman suffrage. Um, uh, first Lady F Franklin, remember, also puts the first woman in his cabinet, Frances Perkins. So, so this is, again, and sort of a 19th Amendment thing. Um, you know, we ha aren't yet talking about the other possible President Clinton, although we might be in a few years. Um, um, and uh, um, so I'll talk a little bit about at the gubernatorial level, post 19th Amendment, you get women succeeding their husbands, Nellie Taylor Ross in Wyoming, Ma Ferguson, you know, and right after the 19th Amendment, then Lurleen Wallace, we could talk about Hale and Lindy Boggs in the, the House of Representatives or, or Senators, Mel and uh, the Carnahan, lots of others. Um, so um, it is very interesting now, the, these pairings that are made possible um, and sometimes even father-daughter combinations, uh, Alf Landon and um, uh, Senator Kasselbaum and things like that, um, very much n products of woman suffrage, creating all sorts of new possibilities and configurations. And um, so when Bill Clinton can plausibly, you know, have as his, as his wingman, as his successor, the person that's going to carry on his banner, both Al and Hillary. You see, Hillary is more like Alexander Hamilton in some ways than just purely Martha Washington. You know, and um, uh, uh, but but that does complicate the role of the other running mates too. When women actually themselves are are plausible senators, cabinet officers, presidential candidates, maybe one well, day I mean, presidents. Think of it: the 1996 election, Bill Clinton versus Bob Dole. What happens right after that? Senators Hillary Clinton and Elizabeth Doe. I mean, that, that Can, is a direct what, outcome. Of the you talked, Akeel, about how the founders, when they wrote the, the Constitution, was so worried about their male heirs. They never dreamed, they couldn't have even imagined that, sh that they should have been worrying about the wives. Yeah. Or their daughters. Well, and, uh, and or their daughters. The, and some of their daughters. I mean, it's interesting. Jefferson, who was awful about women, um, was uh, and basically thought women, you know, women messed in in the courts of Europe much too much and all of that. But he wrote to his daughter about politics all the time, and you know, expected her to be a political person engaged in politics with him. I mean, Martha Washington wasn't seen as partisan, but she was incredibly partisan because she called Jefferson, you know, the most despicable man she had ever heard of, and um, and so. So I think that there was, there was a lot more political conversation and political advice and all of that going on. I think it's just that we don't, we don't wrap our minds around it because it seems so different. That, that cap that Martha's wearing, you know, it just does her a disservice. And um, I, I think that we just don't see these women in that light. And the only reason I, I mean, I think it's important because I think it's important that we understand the role that they played in forming this country, but, and I think it's very important for girls to know that, but I also think that we shouldn't just think that this is a modern phenomenon and that it did only come post 19th Amendment. First of all, the fight to get the 19th Amendment required so much political activity on the part of these women and, and not necessarily the women of that period, but not very long after that.